It's NFL week six, and we're back with our predictions and pick them here for the NFL season. It's been a lot of fun this year. There's been a ton of upsets, a ton of crazy games, a lot of close games. I think that's been one of the biggest MOs of this season, and we're really excited to bring our week six pick them and predictions to you guys, continuing the series that we have gone throughout all you're doing. And as you can see, Austin's 45, 30, and one, still kicking my butt as per usual. That's a staple of this series. Austin's picks are usually right. Mine are usually a little bit less right, but hey, we're both about above 500. I can't believe I have to say this, but if you guys don't believe we're above 500, just look at the records. You can go back, look through all the games. Don't know why people don't have uh, issues with like listening, but uh, it tends to happen if you read our comments. But yeah, 42, 33, and one, not a great showing for me, but Austin, on the other hand, he's been killing it. So let's get into this week. How are we going to line up this week? Well, we have bye weeks again. Last uh, couple weeks here, the first bye weeks this season, no bye weeks. But now this week, four teams are on bye. The Detroit Lions, the Las Vegas Raiders, Tennessee Titans, and Houston Texans all will go through this next week without losing a game. That's one thing we can guarantee for all four of these teams. They're not going to lose this week. So congratulations to those four teams. And now as we go into our first matchup here on Thursday Night Football, we've got a great game. And I say that a little facetiously here. The Washington Commanders head into Chicago to take on the Bears. And this is the game of Carson Wentz versus Justin Fields. Which one of these two is going to feel more pressure early on? I think that's going to be the biggest question. Austin, we both went with the Commanders here. Probably just feels a little bit safer just going with the older, a little bit more veteran QB. And at this point of the year, Justin Fields has ran the ball basically as many times as he's completed a pass, which doesn't give you a ton of confidence in this Bears team. Break down why you have the commanders here beating Chicago. Yeah, I think the big reason why is, like you had alluded to earlier, it's that front. I look at the front of the commanders, and they're going to give Larry Borum uh, a lot of issues. I'm going to be completely honest. I, I don't have a, a ton of confidence in this Bears offensive line. I, I think they they struggle in pretty much all phases there. Um, you know, I mean, they, they've ran the ball pretty well, but in terms of pass protection, definitely have struggled across the board. Uh, this is one of those games where the commanders can break out in a big way with their, their defensive front and um, maybe steal one on the road from Chicago. Yeah, I, I think that's really the, the biggest MO and the biggest reason here as to why Washington's going to win this game. You can trust their defensive front against a younger, less experienced Chicago Bears offensive line that, again, when you look at it on paper, there's not a lot of great talent there either. Uh, obviously, they do have a couple bright spots, but uh, overall, I think Justin Fields is going to have a long day ahead of him here on Thursday night. Then we move into our next game here, and that, of course, comes on Sunday. As we look at the Sunday slate, there's a ton of different games, and this is a really fun one. The Baltimore Ravens, who through week four, they were two and two and only had trailed for 14 seconds. Of course, Sunday night, they played the Cincinnati Bengals right during the time slot we're recording here. Actually, we're recording right at halftime, so we do not have the outcome of that game quite yet, but when you look at the Ravens, they're a really talented team. They've played in a lot of close games this year, but the Giants, they've been the surprise team of the season. Four and one record at this point in London, pulled off a big win against the Green Bay Packers. Austin, you're going Ravens. I'm going Giants. Break down your thoughts on Baltimore first. Yeah, Lamar Jackson single-handedly could change the you know entire complexion of this game with his ability to run the football. I think the Giants are going to be definitely on their toes. It's going to take some great linebacker play with, you know, guys spying Lamar Jackson and just being able to tackle him in open field. It's going to be a lot of opportunities to, you know, have to funnel him back inside, you know, for, for guys to make tackles with his ability to run. It creates for a ton of mismatches across the board. And also, you know, it really depends on, you know, how is Daniel Jones health moving into this game? You know, he's been, you know, dealing with an injury. Um, you know, was a little bit gimpy in that Packers game, but I mean, he played through the pain for sure. So, you know, hopefully he's able to go at, at full force, but uh, you know, that's part of the reason why I was a little, little shy on the giants here. If Daniel Jones has some issues health wise throughout the course of the week um, that's why I'm going to go with Baltimore here on the road. I just like the Ravens roster more. And I think that, you know, they're a dangerous team once they get the ball moving. Right. I'm not the biggest Daniel Jones believer. You guys all know that if you've been watching the videos, but what I do think is he has enough athleticism, assuming he's healthy and is going to play this next week, which at this point I'm assuming he's going to, I think he's going to have another nice gritty performance and just making plays when he has to. And I think Dable's done a really great job empowering this offense around him without relying on him too heavily. And we've seen a ton of examples of that, you know, Saquon Barkley at Wildcat. That's something we've seen a little bit now this year, and they've had some success on that. And I think that's going to be something they continue to build off of. 
a really gritty win against Green Bay where that defense was really the main reason that they pulled that game out, pitched a shutout in the second half of that one against an Aaron Rodgers-led team. I think this is going to be a really close game. I also do favor them since they're at home just a little bit. I think this is probably going to be a shootout style game, three point win for one team or the other. And for me, I'm narrowly opting with the giants. But again, if you want to be right and you're betting money on this, I would go with that guy who on top here, Austin right now, he's three games better than me on the season. And this maybe would move that number to four moving into our next game. Now on the slate, we've got Jacksonville heading into Indianapolis to take on the Colts. And this was my lock of the week. If I were to have one Jaguars, I think that they're going to bounce back after a disappointing loss to the Texans. They're going to take care of business on the road. We know historically the Jaguars own the Colts. We've seen that. We know that's going to play out that way. Austin, you went with your Jaguars as well. Break down why you have them beating Indy here. Well, I I think this might be a mistake already. I've picked the Jags once this year. That was uh, against the Texans. Felt pretty confident and was definitely burned by it. I think Jacksonville does match up pretty well with Indianapolis. Their ability to stop the run is a big reason why. Had some issues against Damian Pierce, however, ton of yards after contact, which has been the MO for him throughout the course of the season. But looking at Jacksonville, I think they match up pretty well across the board. I think they're going to get after Matt Ryan very, very early in this game. And overall, um, I still like them, even though they are on the road. Um, never easy for me to pick Jacksonville, but I you know, mistakenly did it once again. I'm hoping to see a big week here from Trevor Lawrence. I think he's due for one. You know, a few weeks ago, got that AFC Player of the Week award. And I think he could be really in line to get another one here, especially if he performs the way I know he's capable of. And I want to see Christian Kirk really get involved early and often in this game. Moving into our next matchup now, we're looking at New England going into Cleveland to take on the Cleveland Browns, who just made a big trade right before we're recording this. Deion Jones got traded to the Cleveland Browns. Absolutely insane. Make sure to go check out that video on the channel. But here we have New England, who they've been dealing with injuries. No Mac Jones the past couple of weeks. Bailey Zappi has been leading this team. They played phenomenally well against Detroit. But Cleveland, just up and down the roster, I think is a much better team than the Detroit Lions are. And they've been playing really well, even with Jacoby Brissett under center, Austin. Why have the Browns been so successful? I know you're a big fan of what I would say is arguably their best player on their roster right now. Yeah, I definitely think a lot of it comes down to just being able to consistently run the football and and keep teams on their toes. Uh, They do a great job out of play action. We saw that with Kevin Stefanski dating back to Minnesota. That was brought over here to Cleveland with that philosophy of running the ball consistently, controlling, you know, the tempo, controlling the, the time of possession, all big factors for this Cleveland Browns team. And, you know, their, their formula for success is running the football, going out of play action, making, you know, nice, easy, you know, throwing lanes for uh, Jacoby Brissett. And I think New England might have a head up in, in one facet, just the fact that Bill Belichick knows uh, Jacoby Brissett in and out. He, he knows what, you know, makes him tick. So that's one way I thought about, you know, potentially taking the Patriots. However, I like Cleveland. I like the roster more. And I, I think that this running game is going to show out once again here against the New England Patriots. You know, should see a, a nice dose of Kareem Hunt as well. But overall, I like Jacoby Brissett and the job he's done. That's why I'm opting for Cleveland once again. Right. I, I really like Nick Chubb. I think he has a huge advantage in this game. But one player I do want to ask you about, if we were to set the over under at 0.5 interceptions for Jack Jones, are you going over? Or are you going under? I mean, with how it's been going this year, you, you got to think. You got to think over, but I'd actually take the under. I think Jacoby Brissett's going to take care of the ball in this game. I like that. I like that a lot. Moving into our next game now, we've got another good game here on the schedule. The Cincinnati Bengals, who again are playing the Ravens on Sunday night football, head into New Orleans to take on the Saints. And surprisingly, we both go with Cincinnati here. We tend to really prefer the home team throughout most of Pickham. But Cincinnati, I think we just really like this roster and the way that they can match up with New Orleans, especially when you look at where Cincinnati's strong. Those three wide receiver sets that they can run out of. And Hayden Hurst has been a real blessing for this team as well at tight end. Love what they have as playmakers on the outside. And you also have Joe Mixon able to run the football. New Orleans, again, there's still question marks. Andy Dalton's gone the last two weeks. Will Jameis Winston be healthy? Remember, we do record this video nearly a week before the actual games are played. So there's a lot of news that could break later about Jameis Winston, whether he's available or not. Austin, for New Orleans right now, is it a concern about health or is it just Cincinnati's a better team than them? I just think Cincinnati has, has got to be able to put string some wins together in close matchups. And that's what they were doing last year. That's why they obviously made it to the postseason and won some close games in those playoffs. And I think once again, we're going to have to see that Cincinnati's going to have to kind of change their offensive philosophy a little bit to try to get back to being that explosive offs, that offense that we've seen throughout the duration of the postseason. 
Uh, once again, they, they got to find some quicker throws. Um, right now, they're just letting plays develop too long, and that's really what's causing some of these sacks. Part of it's just an issue with the offensive line. Part of it's they're looking too much for that big play. Sometimes you have to take what the, the defense gives you, and I think Cincinnati, once again, it's a tough matchup. New Orleans Saints defense is for real, and I, I've been preaching that for quite some time here, but I, I think, once again, it's great offense versus great defense. And we obviously have the Bengals slightly out edging the Saints. One of the most fascinating matchups throughout the week here is going to be Marshawn Lattimore, Jamar Chase, assuming both of them are healthy and able to go for sure on Sunday. Austin, who do you think is the better of that matchup here? You know, I, I think Jamar Chase is, is going to have a big day, um, you know, going down to Louisiana. Uh, I think that's going to be kind of fun, him going back to the area where he dominated college ball. I love this a lot for Jamar Chase. It's going to be a lot of fun for sure. LSU fans are going to be a little divided here. Do they cheer for New Orleans or do they cheer for Burrow and Jamar Chase like they were a few years ago? That'll have yet to be seen, but I'm excited for that matchup for sure. Moving into our next game now, we look at a matchup here between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And the Steelers really struggled against the Buffalo Bills. I think that's more of a testament to who Buffalo is, though, than who Pittsburgh really is. The Bills are just such a good dominant team. It's hard to extrapolate a ton of that from Pittsburgh, uh, except for the fact that, hey, they're not title contenders this year. But I think we did see some really good stuff from Kenny Pickett, Austin. Obviously, we're both going Buccaneers here. I think it's going to be a similar case of, hey, the Bucs are just the better team. Are you happy with what you've seen from Kenny Pickett so far? I think he's brought a little bit of energy to this team. That's kind of the biggest thing. Um, there, there's some huge red flags that you've seen so far, but also some positives. So right now, I think it's a little early to kind of tell exactly how I feel about him. But once again, give him a couple of games, let him get settled into this offense. They definitely have some playmakers um, at the running back position, at tight end with Friar Muth, uh, at the wide receiver position. They, they have a lot of different skills on, on that offense. Good, good players. But once again, that offensive line has been a huge issue. Therefore, you know, Kenny Pickett does not have a lot of time to throw the football and really diagnose a defense. Right. Friar Muth probably out this week as well with the concussion. So that's already one guy down, likely for the Pittsburgh Steelers, we'd have to assume. And, and like we've talked about, you know, all year, the Buccaneers defense is really legit. Uh, and that offense, too, they've started to piece together how to move the football. Leonard Fournette had a really great week five. And I hope to see him continue to do that for all of the fantasy owners out there that have money on their rosters. Hopefully he can continue to move the ball down the field and find the end zone as well. That's been a, a huge thing for him in recent weeks. San Francisco, the 49ers head into Atlanta to take on the Falcons. And without uh, Kyle Pitts, you know, the Falcons struggled early on in that game against the Buccaneers. And then they kind of got hosed at the end with what was, I think, a brutal roughing the passer call. Obviously, it's one of the more subjective calls in the entire NFL. We've seen a lot of really bad ones over the last three or four years. And I think that was one of the worst ones we've seen yet. And it maybe cost the Falcons a chance at that game. But the 49ers here moving into this next week, probably just the better team. With Jimmy G, they found some stability. They've been able to really move the football again. There's a reason this team went to the NFC Conference Championship game last year with Trey Lance having really little impact on that. This team is really good top to bottom. Jimmy Garoppolo, kind of what we've seen from Jacoby Brissett. He, I think he's a little bit better than Jacoby Brissett, obviously, with his ability to manage a game and make some of the throws. The Niners are legit still. Austin, how high do you think this team can go? Yeah, I, I think they're a little limited at, at certain times with Jimmy Garoppolo, but the thing that's important to note about them is a lot of their game is predicated on running the football, and it really doesn't matter who's in that backfield. You see good production for the most part on whoever is back there, so that's a true testament to Shanahan's offense. It, it's a testament to the stability of this offensive line and what they've built there. Um, they've made some really good selections over the last couple of seasons with this offensive line. And I think once again, Atlanta is going to hang around in this game. Uh, we didn't give them a, a really a true chance against Tampa, but they hung in there. Um, they were competitive, especially towards the end against the Bucs. I think the same case is going to be here with San Francisco 49ers, who, who is, you know, they're the definitely the better roster. Um, but I mean, Arthur Smith has done a phenomenal job staying in games despite having a talent deficient roster. Right. I think Arthur Smith's really done a great job in the first year and a half of his tenure in Atlanta, just staying in games like you're talking about. And I think the roster has really overperformed in recent memory, just with what he's had on the roster compared to, you know, really where they should be. They should be a team that each year's winning two or three games, honestly, but they've been able to pull out more than that historically. And I think this year they'll probably have another case of that as well. 
Moving into our next matchup now, we are looking at a game here between the New York Jets, who are a fun surprise up to this point of the season, and the Green Bay Packers. For those of you who do not know, I am a Jets fan. No, I'm not a homer. In fact, I was really shocked that we won against the Miami Dolphins. I almost never picked them. So this week's really awesome for me because I know since I picked them, they're going to lose. And then Austin here can stop telling me how great my team is. Uh, it's a fun dynamic we have here on the channel. I tell Austin how great the Jaguars are. He tells me how great the Jets are. And usually we're picking one and two in the draft because they're, both of our teams are terrible. Uh, Austin, you're going with the Packers here. I think that's the right pick in Lambeau Field. Uh, you know, the Packers do have to travel back from London, though. Do you have any concerns about that? Yeah, not really. You know, I, I think that the, the Green Bay Packers are – dangerous still um more specifically looking at this running game i mean aaron jones and and aj Dillon are a dynamic rushing duo and it's worked out beautifully you know a lot of us were questioning the the Dillon selection when it happened when he was coming out of boston college but overall he is proving why it's going to work there um i think they're starting to figure it out at the receiver position you know trying to piece it together yes they lost to the giants but at the end of the day i mean the giants have turned out to be a good football team and I look at the, the Green Bay Packers as a team that can get very, very hot um, at, at certain points of the year. And I don't really see Aaron Rodgers losing back to back. He's normally pretty darn good at bouncing back, um, especially uh, against the New York Jets while they're at home. I have a lot of confidence in the Packers this week. Yeah, here I'm really just betting on the fact that maybe the New York teams are Aaron Rodgers kryptonite. That's all I'm hoping for here for the Jets. They're probably not going to get the win this week but hey I'm praying for it and I hope that the rookies can keep balling that's really what we've seen Brees Hall Garrett Wilson Sauce Gardner those three what a, a great draft from Joe Douglas and even if it doesn't mean that they're going to win a ton of games this year I think that for the first time in a while I can actually confidently say that the New York Jets future is somewhat bright in comparison to other teams in the league moving into our next game here we have a matchup between the Minnesota Vikings and the Miami Dolphins. And there's a lot of question marks about the Dolphins right now. Tua Tagovailoa obviously out with the injury that almost broke the internet. Then we also have Teddy Bridgewater who goes down. And it's a big reason why the Jets were able to win that game against Miami. This is a really important game for Miami, especially when you look at with where they are in the division with Buffalo and now New York right on their tail. The Vikings here, they're in the driver's seat in the NFC North. 4-1 and one record. The Packers are down at 3-2. and two. If the Vikings can, you know, control their own destiny here and win a ton of games early on, they could set themselves up for a really advantageous end of the season, which I think they really need. Austin, we both have the Vikings winning here. How important is it going to be for what we saw from Kirk Cousins this week to translate into next week of, hey, really good game management throughout the first half, short, accurate throws, moving the chains consistently? I think uh, the Minnesota Vikings put us all through a little bit of a scare. Uh, they did not play four quarters of football. Uh, basically, they, they play two great quarters and two subpar quarters, therefore making it a real game at the end. Uh, they were absolutely dominating the Bears early on in the game. The offense was moving the ball. But we've seen that with this team where they will randomly just can stall out for no reason after you know starting out very hot out of the gate. A lot of this game for us picking the Vikings, I think, is based off of the health at the quarterback position. If Skylar Thompson has to start this week against the Minnesota Vikings, I definitely – you know, I'm favoring the Vikings huge, but if it's Teddy Bridgewater more so, then maybe it's a little more of a conversation. I still have some confidence in the Vikings. So I think that this offense is dangerous, as is the Dolphins. But at the end of the day, we don't know the, the overall health. Um, despite the Dolphins being at home, we still like the Vikings here, which could be absolutely huge to see them win another game. Right. If the shoe was on the other foot here, let's say Kirk Cousins out for this game, Tua Tagovailoa is healthy. I think it would be really easy to bet on the Dolphins here. I think it's really, like you said, coming down to the health of the quarterback spot, the most important position on the football field. Miami right now, there's a huge question mark because of those injuries. Minnesota, on the other hand, they're coming into this week. Pretty clean bill uh, of health, honestly, for Minnesota. They've been re relatively lucky. Obviously, Lewis seen with a bad injury, uh, but he wasn't playing a ton of safety snaps for them anyway. They've been pretty healthy up to this point. Uh, and I think it gives them a big advantage in this game. As we move into our next matchup now, we are looking at a matchup between the Carolina Panthers, and they head into SoFi Stadium to take on the Los Angeles Rams in what is probably one of the easiest games of the week to predict here. Carolina has been bad. Baker Mayfield has been bad. Uh, in fact, I believe he has the lowest passer rating out of all starting quarterbacks in the NFL this year. Uh, and the Rams, even though they haven't been great, they're just better than Carolina. Austin, is there really any argument to that? Yeah. Oh boy. Carolina is a disaster and we have not been high on this team for the last two seasons. And 
Part of the issue is uh, from an overall front office standpoint, they've just put together a bad product. Uh, the coaching staff has not elevated any of their players to really any capacity. And I'm sorry for, for Panthers fans. It's just, it's tough out there. I, I don't think that Matt rules the long-term solution. I believe he will be fired this year. And I believe he won't make it all the way till the end of the season for them to do so. Carolina is going to want to see a quick turnaround, but it's not going to be with Matt rule. The quarterback position is a complete disaster. Let's see, you know, what, what happens next. Cause Baker Mayfield was in a walking boot, uh, you know, at, at, at the end of that game. So kind of curious to see, you know, what happens here with Carolina, but the, the Rams are also, you know, basically sputtering offensively, not really sure what the issue is. I, I think a reshuffled offensive line is the biggest issue with this team right now, completely different from what they had in the Super Bowl. So they're going to have to make some big changes up front. Um, they've already had probably six, seven different line combinations uh, at this point in the season. Right. Matt Stafford's already been sacked 21 times through five games. That's just not going to get the job done. Obviously, the offensive line has to step up. But I also think Sean McVay is going to find ways to, you know, open the door here for, you know, different passing angles, passing lanes, and also different running lanes uh, to hopefully alleviate some of that pressure, against, especially against a bad Carolina team. The whole MO has got to be this week. Move the chains, control the football, go win a game you're supposed to win. I think the Rams are going to do that. Moving into our next one now. We look at a matchup here between Arizona and Seattle. We have one of those classic NFC West games here. And Arizona kind of been a little disappointing this year. Seattle's been kind of a little more promising than you would expect. I think Arizona's much better on paper. But I have Seattle here winning at home. I really like what I've seen from Geno Smith this year. He's made plays in the pocket. He's made plays out of the pocket. Improv or not, he's been performing, completing a ton of his balls. And he's been very safe with the football as well for the most part, which I really like. And Arizona, they've been a little frisky. They've had some interesting wins. They've also had some kind of questionable losses here, Austin. Obviously played very close with Philadelphia this week and lost on a field goal that doinked off the upright. Austin, does this recent performance against Philadelphia give you a little bit more hope in Arizona? Or where are you kind of at with them in general? I know you have them winning over Seattle here. Yeah, I think uh, part of it was I, I had a little bit of a confidence instilled in me after seeing the result of that Philadelphia game. The fact that they were a field goal away from going to overtime with them shows me that they are a competitive football team, but it really depends on what Arizona team you're getting. They are a team that's nearly impossible to try to predict wins for because they will drop random games that they should win. And then there's other games that they have no business being in that they can win. So this team is so hard to predict, in my opinion. Uh, we had the issues with this last year with Carolina. I think that's kind of this year's version of it. They're tough. They're tough to peg, but at the end of the day, I think they can get the job done on the road. Kyler Murray should have a big game here, but you know, once again, Geno Smith has been exceeding all expectations. Important note, this is also the last week that, uh, that DeAndre Hopkins will miss a game because of his suspension, so even if they do lose this week, it'll be a huge gain for them getting DeAndre Hopkins back long-term after this week as well, so that's going to be a storyline to watch there in Arizona. Into our next game now, we look at a matchup here between the Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs, and this has got to be the matchup of the week, in my opinion. Probably the two best teams in the AFC still at this point. The Kansas City Chiefs are always so consistent with Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid and Travis Kelsey. Those are really the lifeblood of their offense, the stability points, and they make sure that everything runs smoothly, and Buffalo might have just, quite frankly, the guy who's playing the best football right now in the entire NFL and Josh Allen. Uh, he's got so many different touchdowns. I, I believe in the first half in week five, he had like 340 total yards. He's just a machine. Uh, he's probably the most physically dominant player in the NFL right now as well, just with what you see. He runs through linebackers. He takes the top of, off the defense with his arms. Uh, I, he's incredible. So this is a really tough game. We both went with Kansas City, which maybe feels a little sacrilegious with, with, which, with how good Buffalo's been, excuse me. Austin, why did you choose Kansas City at home here over Buffalo? Arrowhead is one of the toughest toughest places to play, in my opinion. Uh, it just gets super loud in there. And I think when you look at two teams that are evenly matched the way that they are, uh, the ability to, for both of them to completely air it out. Um, you know, Buffalo's defense is, is pretty, pretty tough to go up against. But Kansas City's is, is definitely no slouch either. So I think overall, these teams are very close in terms of talent level two elite quarterbacks and opting to go for the home team here feels like the right thing. I feel like for both of us, had this been in Buffalo, we would have picked the bills. 
Right. And this is, you know, the replay matchup of last year, 13 seconds left. Kansas City gets back into field goal range, wins in overtime on what the rules, you know, now are changed from. This matchup is going to be close. It's going to be very tight. The Bills right now have the best point differential. They've given up the least points in the league and they've scored the most points in the league. They are probably the most dominant team in the league right now. But like you've said, Austin, very tough matchup still. Kansas City at home gives them a huge advantage in my eyes. Uh, and I think Mahomes has just gotten the better of Josh Allen up to this point. Maybe this is the you know changing of the tide here, but ultimately this is going to be the game of the week and a really must-watch game, uh, a really great game that everyone has to tune into, in my opinion. Moving into our next matchup now, we go into Sunday night primetime here at the Dallas Cowboys, head into Philadelphia to take on the Eagles. And this is going to be another really good game. Cooper Rush, 5-0. and The Philadelphia Eagles, 5-0. and Obviously, not something we would have expected coming into this week six matchup that uh, Cooper Rush is 5-0 and as a starter in his career on uh, that Jalen Hurts and the Eagles. We did expect this. We expected them to be a really great team. Maybe not 5-0 and great, but they've played that way all year long. And it makes it really hard to pick against them. Just like we talked about how it's tough to pick against the Bills. Well, it's tough to pick against the Eagles. And they're not playing Patrick Mahomes this week. And they're not on the road this week. Makes it really easy to pick them in my eyes. Austin, what are you specifically watching for between these two uh, teams here in division matchup? Um, I, I think part of it's going to be how is Dallas's offensive line going to hold up against this Philadelphia you know, defensive line? I, I think that... Philadelphia is able to manufacture pressures in a, a multitude of ways, whether it's just sending four guys, whether it's you know sending an exotic blitz, it doesn't really matter because they generate pressures. Ask Carson Wentz how that went because that was a disaster for him. I think this very well could be a matchup of in the trenches. I, I'm big on the Philadelphia Eagles, what they have up front. And I think offensively, the Eagles are just super dangerous. A lot of ways they can hurt you. Miles Sanders is playing the best football of his career, in my opinion. Jalen Hurst is playing the best football of his career. A.J. Brown has been a seamless transition from the Tennessee offense into Philly's offense. And Devontae Smith is, once again, showing why he was a worthy selection uh, in the draft. I think a lot of the culmination of what they have is going to propel them in this game. I think Dallas is a good team, and it's very impressive what they've been able to do with Cooper Rush as their quarterback. But at the end of the day, I, I think the, the Eagles very well could rain on their parade here. Denver Broncos, they head into Los Angeles to take on the Chargers. And here at this point, the Broncos haven't looked great. And there's a PRP injection for Russell Wilson into his shoulder area. Uh, and I'm hoping and I'm banking on that turning around this season for Denver. To be honest, Russell Wilson has played worse than Geno Smith this year. Cut and dry, spent, just been the facts. He's not played up to par with what you expect when you hear Russell Wilson's name. But you could also say that about the Chargers. Chargers have not been as good as everyone expected them to be. They got a very narrow win over the Cleveland Browns this year, uh, but they've really struggled to stop the running game. Will Melvin Gordon and Mike Boone be enough to take advantage of that? Maybe, but I'm betting and I'm really betting here on Nathaniel Hackett and Russell Wilson to figure it out. Austin, you're going with the Chargers, though, probably the safer bet at home here. Yeah, I just like the Chargers a lot more. I like their skill positions. Um, I, I think Justin Herbert's just flat out the better quarterback here. Austin Eckler is also a, a very, very interesting player to see how he exploded, uh, you know, obviously against Cleveland was a, a big showing for him. I think this Chargers offense, once they get a little healthier, this is a team that's still a force to be reckoned with, in my opinion, in the AFC West. Very talented team on paper. Now I just want to see it translate to some more quality wins, which I think it's a very, very doable game here against Denver. Yeah, I definitely think so as well. It's going to be a good matchup. Again, I'm really excited for this weekend of games. A lot of fun stuff to watch. Hopefully you guys did enjoy today's video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and also subscribe for more here at Utility Sports. A lot of fun recording these videos. Let us know in the comment section your picks for this week. And until next time, we'll catch you in the very next Utility Sports video.